and the three acts were deconstruction, dialogue, and the finale. We have four galleries, you can, and we have four large galleries next door, but this is pretty much it. Deconstruction, dialogue, and the finale, and the original idea at the DNA was that you went in, here's the screen, and then you walk behind the screen, and of course you started where costume designers start with the screenplay. And again, you know, I have lots of, um, I have, those of you who know me and who know our work so intimately know can read this exhibition on many other different levels. But one of the things that we constantly face and doesn't help us is the confusion between costume and fashion. And so I had to start with the screenplay because that's, the, that's everything upon which our work is, is built. Is there something wrong with this uh, thing, Mary? Is that better? Okay, so we start with the screenplay, and when you walk into the gallery, you'll see, and uh, go to the next slide, Mary. Oh, this is, uh, yeah, and this, this opening, what you see right outside, is only in LA. We created this opening, it's like an aperture, and then we projected on it, and next slide, right? Because, yeah, right because I wanted to have a feel like you were going into a movie theater, but I, we designed this just for LA. And the next slide, yeah, next slide. And that's, that's this exhibition where you were actually walking down a dark hall into the theater and then into the exhibition. Next slide. So the, the plinths are called Designing the Character, Deborah's Lesson, Serving the story, deconstructing characters in royal romance. You won't see these inside. Uh, these are our labels for the, for the development of the exhibition. Next slide. Next slide. All right, so that's how it looked in London. So you can see the development of the plinth, always using, um, always using this rectangle to get smaller and smaller and smaller, very much like um, a ray of light going into a movie theater. Next slide. Next slide. And again, don't run it, Mary. Don't run it, I just want to get through it. Okay, so in here, um, you see the green curtain dress. Now this was the real curtain dress that came from the University of Texas at Austin. is the home of the David O. Salesman collection. This dress, which is the original, uh, did not come to Los Angeles. And it did not come to Los Angeles because, do you know what this year is? It's the, it's the 75th anniversary of Gone with the Wind. So, uh, goddamn them. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they pulled it from the exhibition for some ridiculous Gone with the Wind celebration. <laughs> and so I replaced it with Mary Poppins, which I thought was okay. Um, but you can see in front of every, uh, in front of every single costume is the screenplay. And it's not just the screenplay. I read every single script and I pulled the scene which inspired the costume behind it. And what I did with my animators, and I had the most wonderful animators in London, I read the screenplay and using my highlighter and my costume design brain, I highlighted what was most important to me as a costume designer, and they animated those sentences, right? So I was reading it as if I was breaking it down, and they animated those, so if you're a civilian reading it, those sentences pop out at you and engage you, right? And then you see the costume behind it, and then you see the actor in the costume, full size on a screen behind it. That, to me, was getting, getting the general public in three steps from script to screen as elegantly as possible. Screenplay, costume, actor in the costume, and a story, right? That's the first plan. Mary, next one. That's the way I did it. Next one. 
that's Chaplin's costume, by the way, is the oldest costume in the exhibition. It's from the Tramp, 1914. It's loaned by the Chaplin family in Switzerland. You may never see it again, right? And it goes back to Switzerland on March 2nd. Next slide. So this is Deborah's lesson. And next slide. This is the most important part of it. I'll just show you a little bit. It's about costume and identity. I look for stuff that's extremely unique looking that, you know, that not the average man can pull off. I like blue. You can see most of my outfit is blue. This is my club time. And um, I've been saying my club the past few days, East Indian Club. Quite classical, but with an edge. I'm not that much of a deep thinker now. I just like it because I like it. I like this. I think this is so nasty. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, I go to an art college, so everyone's just really into like piercings and stuff. Jacket, Dutch in Havana, leopard print lining. I didn't buy it, I made it. These are actually Rocket Republics. Wear any tie you want, you have to wear a jacket and trousers, no jeans. Or but they don't come like this. I had to get these tailored to be uh, skinny fitted to me. Uh, and that's what I do with the majority of the jeans I get, actually. I have to get them s tailored because uh, I'm really skinny. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mary. Next slide. So, if anyone here thinks that this show is about the clothes, I would say you are wrong. This show is not about the clothes, and I did everything I could, everything that I could, to support, to support these costumes in this production. And what I'd like to explain to you, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say this, and it, and it may be a subject for questions after. But this was never going to be about the big costume. This was never going to be about the, the Oscar for best costume. And is Anna Wyckoff here? Well, Anna Wyckoff told me that I should tell you this story and that it was exemplative of my thinking. So I'm a gardener, and there's an old, um, there's something that um, is said amongst gardeners in England, that um, when you start gardening, you like big, colorful flowers. Then as you continue gardening, you like small flowers. And then as you, your discretion uh, goes on higher, you like leaves. <laughs> and then you like the underside of leaves. Well, if we use that metaphor for where I'm at with costume and my passion for and my understanding of costume, I am truly a beekeeper. <laughs> I've, I've gone beyond uh, the underside of leaves at this point. What I care about is that I care that everyone knows that we don't just do clothes. In fact, clothes are even secondary to what we do. We are there to help create the people in the movie, and that's all that matters, right? Next slide. So this is about the Bourne identity. Now, Jason Bourne, uh, this is Shay Cunliffe's movie, and, uh, but there are a lot of Bournes and a lot of costume designers working on Bournes, but the people in the story will always be in the frame. They're always going to be in the center of the frame because they get paid so much money. Right? They're always going to be there. So this is Waterloo Station, and this really is part of Deborah's lesson. This really talks about um, this really uh, talks about that nothing on screen is casual and accidental, and even a gray T-shirt and jeans is a costume. Mary, let's uh, yeah. These you're going to see a lot of emphasis 
inside on contemporary clothes. Because really, for me, that's the underside of leaves. That's where costume design lives. And I, I love, you know that I love trim more than anyone else. Does anyone doubt that I love trim? <laughs> I love trim. And I, I say it, but I am really all about tits and feathers. Okay? That's, I am retiring to Vegas. I promise you. Uh, I, no, I love trim. I, I, look, Swarovski is a big contributor, right? So I love trim. I love that stuff. That's not what the show is about. Uh, next, uh, next slide. All right, so this is Jeff Curlin's work for Ocean's uh, Eleven. He happened to uh, design and manufacture all of these. Again, the general public doesn't know this. They are convinced this all comes from Men's Warehouse. Next slide. <laughs> all right, so I used animation. I wanted this exhibition to be alive. And so I want you, I'm going to cut this off because I am really out of town because I have to tell you about Planned Parenthood. Um, but I used animation to educate and entertain and unpack exactly what we did in the most efficient way possible. And it was also very amusing. Next slide. Uh, Indiana Jones, I designed this. I had a lot to say. It's sold inside. Next slide. <laughs> <laughs> so boring, you know. All right, so this is what everybody thinks when they think of Hollywood costume. It's not that I don't admire it, but it just doesn't interest me. Next slide. <laughs> All right, so everything about this exhibition, everything about the exhibition, well, because you all have your bachelor's degrees in costume design. You are masters, uh, you know, you are masters of costume design. You, I, I'm already, you're already with me. You're 10 steps ahead of me. All right, so everything in the exhibition is informed by motion picture making, including the font and the look of the labels. Next slide. Next slide. All right, North Court, my favorite part. Next slide. <laughs> you walk in, in London, we didn't have a separate dining room. Here, we have a separate dining room. Who are the people who haven't seen the exhibition? Hands up. Really high? This will blow your mind. No. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. All right. So, five directors, no waiting. Next slide. Here, this is the birds. This is really her green suit. It comes from, this is a Tippi Hedren suit designed by Edith Head. It comes from a big collection in Dublin. From Newburgh, yes, a Newburgh Silver has a big collection of Hollywood costumes. And uh, this costume is the original costume. And I went to interview and I conducted all of the interviews in the dining room myself. I interviewed all the directors, I interviewed all the costume designers, and those interviews took place over a year in London, LA, and New York. Next slide. So here is Tippy talking about the birds. I realized how important a wardrobe is to a film, to a character. Because it isn't only, uh, is she rich, is she poor, is she, you know, whatever. Uh, is she a slut? Is she a you know high society woman? Um, uh, it, it goes so much further than that. We have the magic of asking the public to believe the same actor or actress is a different person every time you see them in a film. See, to me, that is pure magic. It's not entirely costume. It is costume, hair, makeup, all the visual aspects of what we do of of transforming people. Edith had designed an okay. entire world. There. So I'm not going to, you can go inside and listen to her inside. I started working at Universal Studios in 1978. I'm so sorry I didn't get to know Edith, uh, Miss Head. I'm so sorry I didn't reach out to her then. Uh, but as my last 10 years of scholarship, we really have a huge debt to pay Edith Head. In her writing and in her interviews, she always put costume design first and costume designers first. 
and really created, she was a costume designer and people knew about the field because they had heard her name. Next slide. Next slide. It's worth it to hear, next slide. It's worth it to hear, it's worth standing in front of Marty Scorsese to hear him say, costume is character, okay? So the, the next very large gallery is changing context. This might be very interesting for you. Certainly, I'll never get to it tonight. What you have is a, a big circular plinth in which I start to try to talk about what it was for costume designers to work in silence to sound, black and white color, censorship, remakes, then the different genres. So it's, it's worth going around. I wanted to show you this uh, 90 seconds on Avatar and 90 seconds on motion capture. I'm not gonna do it, I'm already over time. So Mary, keep going. Just keep going. All right, this part is important. So in about 2007, I had dinner with uh, Jim Atchison here in LA. Uh, if I remember correctly, he was in my house for really bad Chinese takeout. And he um, just shook his head. And he said, um, don't do this. It's going to end in tears. Mm -hmm. This is a terrible idea. This is a terrible idea. Um, costume exhibitions are terrible. It's going to be dead frocks on dummies. Another dead frocks. Is there something I said? Are you a James Atchison? Um, I know it's OK. So um, yeah, a producer. Right? So, um, dead frogs on dummies, do not do this. It's going to be another boring costume exhibition. And Jim, really, I, you know, I just love him so dearly, and I admire him, and he's like a maestro. And I thought, I don't want to let him down. I don't want to let you down. I don't want to let the dead friends down and the dead designers down. I don't want to let the costumes down. I, I'm, what am I going to do? Because a costume, not on an actor, it's, it could be really boring. And especially the ones, and especially the way I want to talk about costume design. You know, if I just wanted to have all those Queen Elizabeths all the time, it wouldn't be so bad, because then at least there would be crystal, right? <laughs> but I didn't want those clothes. I wanted the other clothes. I wanted to talk about the story. So, how do you put the actors back in the clothes? And over the five years I was at the DNA, we tried all kinds of things. Uh, so we had, the, we had the mannequins. So we tried putting masks on the mannequins, so everybody was holding a Kristen Dunst mask. You know, not everybody, but Kristen Dunst was holding a mask that looked like Kristen Dunst. Then we tried a face projection. And if you saw the Gautier show, they did it very well. But they were models, not actors. And they didn't need to be personalities, right? So we tried face productions. That was weird. And then uh, we tried having a, an illustrator do um, like, a, um, like a very uh, uh, pretty uh, cartoon of the face of the actor. And eventually I just said, no, let's do this. Let's just pull a moment from the movie, we're gonna rotoscope a moment, the moment in which the actor is wearing the costume. So I provide the context. We're gonna provide a moment, and we're gonna cut it out and put it on the actor. And that's what you're gonna see inside. Next, I'm sorry I'm going so long. I just been so busy sharing. So that's kind of how Meryl looks. Next. All right, so here's Meryl Streep. And you just get to hear her say one thing, which is right up front. Next, listen to Meryl just for a minute. Everything is character. Everything is story. I mean, or should be. I'm a real pain in the ass for every costume designer to work in because to work with because I 
took my degree in costume design. I mean, my thesis in college was, I wasn't majoring in acting, it was costume design, so that's kind of a problem. <laughs> Uh, show of hands, how many of you know that her senior thesis in master was costumes? Okay, it's very funny though. Um, I was completely shocked. I interviewed her. I have never met her. I met her through Ann Roth. I, I interviewed her. She was like letter perfect. And I said, no, no, no. I know you're great, but this is too much. She said, I was a costume design major. Right? So she used it. Uh, next. So third gallery. Let's see it. Mary next. Yeah. Next, next, next. All right, there we go. So the third gallery, and I, I want to leave time for questions. The third gallery is supposed to be, when you walk in, like the best party you ever went to. And you will see that most everybody has a martini glass in their hands. <laughs> and I did very funny pairing. You're going to see it. Um, I did very funny uh, day, dating. Somebody complained there was too much Leonardo DiCaprio, but I needed dates. You know? <laughs> I, he had to date a lot of girls. So I, I needed dates. Um, I wanted the proximity. It's different than a, a normal uh, costume exhibition because I got everybody close. All the mannequins are close, right? They're holding a drink, or some of them are smoking. Right? Uh, so they're smoking or holding a drink, they're close, they're facing each other, and there's some kind of relationship happening, even though, even though they have nothing to do with each other, really, except the themes are the same. When you walk in, it's vamps and vixens. Doesn't say that anywhere, I'm just telling you. <laughs> vamps and vixens walking in. So you'll see Marlena Dietrich lighting Sharon Stone's cigarette. <laughs> and then you come over and you go around to Gunslingers and Blades, where all the goodies and the baddies are fighting. And then you end with the Ruby Slippers, which is where you should end, because there's no place like home. So um, in the end, to sum up, only 10 minutes overdue, is that I want to leave you with this thought. I wanted to make Jim happy. I did not want it to be dead fox on dummies. I've been going to exhibitions, fashion exhibitions, and costume exhibitions since I was a little girl. I love clothes. And I know when I go to the Met and I see Charles James or if I see Dior, I know that I can put my hands behind my back and, and get really, really, really close and I can smell the women's perfume coming off the clothes. And I know how beautiful those clothes can be. And I learn about clothes and construction from those exhibitions. And I'm very grateful for that. That's not what this exhibition was about. Because truly, Jim is right. Our clothes were never meant to be seen in person. It's a very cruel idea to have a costume design exhibition. It's cruel. <coughs> and unreasonable for our clothes to bear the weight of a gaze of a visitor because it doesn't really matter if they're made like a deal, if they're made like couture, even though some are. And we know that because we have the most talented people in the city, right? But it doesn't matter because the ugly clothes have the same weight in our estimation as the beautiful clothes. It just matters that they're right. So. What you hear when you walk in, this music, is a score that I commissioned to be written for the exhibition. You're hearing 60 minutes of new music written for this production. I am the director of this production. I recast all of your costumes for a new production called Hollywood Costume Design in which I created a new story and a new script, and I gave them a new reason and a new role, right? And new, new partners and new boyfriends and new girlfriends and new friends to be with. They're all recast 
in a dramatic event. So it's quite different than a regular show because the costume isn't standing there. Hi, I'm a costume, I'm probably headless, and I'm lit like I'm in a museum, and just take what you can from me. No. This show is supposed to be an emotional journey, just like movies and television and theater are an emotional journey. So it took a long time for me to think about, I hope that I haven't spoken too long and I'm ready to answer some questions. <laughs>